Okay, we're going to try and do a um, extended globe knot on the top of this. Um, in a previous video I showed you the, what this is. It's just a ball. It um, measures just shy of an inch in diameter, so about 24 mils. Um, and it's just stuck into a, um, it's a bead, wooden bead. It's just forced into a, um, onto a chopstick, which I've cut to length. So the chopstick runs all the way down here, um, which stiffens up the body of that. This is all just over two crowning. Um, this is a doubled diamond. Um, it's fairly straightforward. I think there's other videos on that. So this basically the same as um, knots I've tied before, which I usually start with a diamond, but in this case I'm going to start with a wall and then follow it with a fancy crown. Um, I've forgotten the Ashley number. The Ashley number is, you know, I've forgotten it. I'll put it in the link below. Um, so, if, yeah, start with a simple wall. So take any one, hold it up and hold it into your fingers like that. The next one, which is that one, goes underneath the following one underneath 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 and we're up to the last one which needs to go underneath that first one okay so that's the wall just simple um, open all those out again The way I tie this knot is all about counting um, and placing the cords into position rather than thinking about over and under. Just think about putting them in position. So take any cord <clears throat> and count three counterclockwise. So I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to count three counterclockwise, which is one, two, three, and I'm going to put it in that position. So I go and then hold it under your fingers so that you don't confuse it with any others. So it's tucked under those fingers. Now, that's the one we used. So count two back from that. One, two. And that one goes over three as well, also in clockwise. So one, two, which is that one we just used, and three. And we place it into that position there. We don't think about over and under. We just go all the way around and place it in that position. And that's the one we just used. So we count back two. That's not one, that's the tail of one of this, of this one. So that's the one we've used. So we count back to one, two. So that's the one we use now. And we have to move that three places along. One, remember we don't count that, it's a tail. So that's one, two, three. And we place it into that position there, so just in there. Um, the only thing you have to think about, this is the last one, we don't go over that tail, we go under that tail. So, under that tail. Okay, so we're using this one, we've gone over that one, we need to go over that one and down into that position. And put that under your fingers as well. So you've got three under your fingers now. And then the top makes a little triangle. These ones that you haven't used yet, they're the ones we, um, okay, one, two, three, we haven't used these yet. I'm going to try and bunch these in my hand so it doesn't confuse things by seeing more cords around. Okay, give this a go. Um, so one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, start to kind of count to three. Um, these ones that were just tied are just placed there. They're not locked in in any way. If you let it go, they'll just all fall out. So we need to lock them in. So we use these last three to lock them in. So we go over the one that's gone down beside it and underneath the next base there. So that's a base. 
and that has locked down that one. So that one would have just been flopping around, it's now locked down. This one is our next one, roll the whole thing around. Actually, I'm going to have them do that and let those go because they're confusing me, let alone you. Um, this is our next one, and that's what it needs to lock down. So we go over it to lock it down and under that base. Now the next one, that's the last one we need to use. That's the one that needs locking down, so we go over it and we go under that base there. Sometimes these get pulled up into the knot, just pull them out if they need to. So over that to lock it down and under that. So that's the fancy crown tied. Now the extension part comes now. Um, the easiest way to do it, to conceptually think of what you're doing, is to pull that knot up, pull a little bit of slack out of it. Okay, so we've pulled that up, all these cords are sticking up. Now, that's the wall, the first part of the knot we tied, that's the wall. And this is the fancy crown. What joins the wall and the fancy crown are these, I, th I think of them as bars on a cage. And each one of these tails comes out between two of those bars. The extension is when you extend that, so it's coming out here, it needs to go, so it's coming out here, it needs to go over that and under that so that it comes out here. So each one is has an extra tuck and over and under. So over and under. So now instead of it coming out there, it comes out here. So we keep that under our hand fingers just so we don't um, use it again. So now if you look at this cage, it's got two cords coming out of it because that's the one we just may come out of this. This one needs to move to its place now. or well, not now, but soon. Um, so we're just taking it from coming out of one position and taking, making it come out of two positions along. So this is our next one. We go over there and under there. So keep that under your fingers so we don't use it. This is our next one. So it's coming out here. It needs to go over this bar, under that bar, and it'll come out here. It's basically, it's, all you're doing is weaving. You're just weaving it over one and under the other. So over that one, under that one. over that one, under that one. So it's coming out here, needs to go over that bar, under that bar. And the last one, needs to go over that bar and under that bar there. So now that's how the original knot we tied. The wall is still down here but we've extended it so there's more over-unders in there. Now if you look at These, um, each one of these comes out where we started the wall. That's the very beginning of the wall there where it comes out of the crowning. And this is our tail that we're working with. And each one of those is the same all the way around. So this, this is where we start doubling. And once you start doubling, you just follow the lead. 
that's all there's nothing to think about really just follow it you'd need to follow it if you were to follow it on that side that's called following it on the top or above this is called following below because you're below the lead we want to follow below to build the knot this way not up so we build it that way so this one is following this one so wherever this one goes this one follows I usually go around and do one tuck of each of these first and then to start the rest of the following the rest of the doubling this is called doubling so this one's coming out here just make sure it's below that point just open up a space for it to push through That one is being doubled, so don't get them confused. That's being doubled, see so it's parallel there. It's parallel, so it's going up. So we're not going to double that again down there. We're going to carry it on up there. But the one that's coming down is this one, so that needs doubling. So we put it below its lead. And push it through there. the next one so below its lead as its lead we're going below it it needs to go through that space to follow it up okay this one comes down there we go this is the one that's coming down and that's its lead to follow there going up so that's not the one we're using this is the one that's coming down so we need to put it below its lead open a little gap okay so that's all the, the first part of the wall has all been doubled now so now we go on the way back up here we're doubling the extension part and then when we get to the top we're doubling the um, fancy crown so just I'm working with this one we just keep following that lead Just taking shortcuts and pushing it through two spots rather than just one, but it's the same, doing the same thing, just jumping ahead. Um, that's still following that lead. As you can see, they're still now. Make sure they always stay parallel. You don't want to, at any point, you don't want to do that where they cross over. Just keep them parallel. going so we've got through to the top we now we start coming back down to the bottom still exactly the same though this one is following this one on the lower side of it
you don't have to do these in order, just whatever needs doing, do it. It um, doesn't affect anything if you do it out of order. Okay, I'll leave that because that needs a bit of explaining to do next. Let's do these ones first. Okay, they've all gone around, so they've gone over the top. And this is the point where we, I think I'm going to triple this because I think we've got the room for it. Um, but at this point, if you weren't tripling it, let's just clear these out of the way and just look at one. Okay, at this point, if you weren't tripling it, you'd go follow this around and if you came out here and followed the lead you'd then be tripling it because there'd be three of them so instead of tripling it we come down there and just push it all the way through and out the bottom that way it appears like it's double double but this just pops out the bottom and you trim it off after you've tightened it all up um, but i'm going to triple it so all we're doing is carrying on following the lead. If your cord is thicker and your ball is smaller or something, you may only want to double it, so that's what you would do. So this is all fairly straightforward, so I'm going to just speed through this and um, come back to you when I've finished and when I'm back to the beginning for the third time round. So uh, bear with me while I fly through this. Okay, so um, we're back to the beginning. I've tripled it. Um, at this point is where we cheat our line and come out the bottom. So here we are, this is our working piece, one of our working pieces. Um, we've tripled it along here. If we were to go under there and carry on following and come out here, we'd then have four lines. We don't want four lines, so we're going to go in there so it's carrying on tripling there but instead of coming out there we just come out the bottom so it kind of it's just a diversion so now it looks like we've got three coming into that bridge and three coming out we do the same with all of these so just push it straight through so it's out the bottom
last one. Okay, so that's the knot tied. Even at that point, it's not too bad. Um, I've shown enough of these for you to know how to fare it up. It's a tedious process, but it's just methodical and slow. Um, that's where we start. That point is where it comes out of the original crowning. So that's the beginning of our wall knot, right under there. So we start there. We start follow that around. So we'd pull here or here to pull that one up, and the next one is there. That's where that one starts. That one starts there. So we just pull slack away from the beginning until you get all the way around and pull it out the bottom. Once you've done that once or twice, um, it should all be nice and compact, and uh, then you can trim it. So I'm going to do that. I won't even speed that up. I'll do that in my own time, and I'll come back for the trimming and um, just talk you through it. Actually, I'll do a little bit of the tightening up, um, just in case you haven't looked at one of the others before. So, as I say, that's where it starts. So it carries on to there, carries on there, so we could pull from there. The next one is there, pulls it around up to there. Don't pull too much because we it's better to do it in pieces, increments, so that one is coming out there. Coming out there. That's coming out there, so Now we just follow it back down, pulling it, each one of these. You'll lose track of which ones you pull, but if there's any slack, just follow it in the right direction and you'll um, get it to the end eventually. Okay, now I'll do, do this in my own time and um, come back to you, but basically that's the story. It's slow. Okay, I've uh, tightened it all up, um, and this is it just before I've trimmed the tips. Works pretty well. It, there's a lot of tightening in it, a lot of fairing. Um, there's still sort of a bit of gaps there, but um, the hardest thing with these using a ball, I find, is finding the right size ball for the right size cord and the amount of passes that you're going to do. If I'd done two passes, it would have been very gappy, but I don't think there's enough room there for four passes, so probably a slightly smaller ball, but, um, but that's still fine to, in my book, that's, um, that's acceptable. Um, okay, so I usually, um, you don't have to, but you can just trim these at the base and push them in. I usually put a little dab of wood glue on it, just um, to hold it for all time. Use a, um, a dowel or pointer or something. So take each end. I might as well talk about length. This is how much I've got left on each one. There's what, um, 30, about 40 centimeters, about 14, 15 inches. Um, I used a whole hank of um, cord for this and my cord measures about 11 meters so it's divided into three um, so i've used three lengths of one third of 11 meters whatever that maths works out at um, to make six strands so fold it over you get six strands um, so i could have made this piece a little bit longer or I could have used a little bit less cord, but um, I prefer to have too much than too little, but then I make it, so I'm not paying for it, so 
that's a little bit easier for me. Um, so yeah, push, put your clippers in there and pull this tight and then clipping it. Careful not to clip any of your good cords and that'll just leave it there and um, we'll go through and push those back in with a dab of glue. If you pull them, pull it tight against the clippers, it tends to pull back in a little bit which hides it better. Okay, so you take your, uh, you only need a little, so just a little dab, maybe even less, and just push it up and jiggle it around in there, just trying to seal those ends a little bit. As I say, it's not completely necessary unless you're going to be really bashing the thing around, it's not likely to come undone. Um, this is wood glue so it dries clear, you can't see this when it's finished. And this is cotton cord. Um, if you try and do this for synthetic you might want to try and melt them perhaps, but that would be a bit tricky. Um, Yeah, that's fine. And just press those bottoms down and they'll just take a little bit of that glue, hopefully. Okay. There we go. That's our finished piece. Um, hope you've enjoyed that. Hope you've learned something. Um, yeah, if you want to work with hard lake cord um, my link is in the description below to the shop I can I usually have stock I um I don't keep it very well stocked because I've you know got other things to take up my time as well weirdly um, although less so in this corona day anyway stay safe thank you